Consideration provided by... At TJ Maxx, you can afford to turn your closet into a place of endless expression with the quality, styles, and prices you love. Max, what makes you, you. The best things in life come in twos. Two scoops of ice cream, two thumbs up. And now, buy any phone when you switch to Consumer Cellular and get two months of service free. That's right, two months free. All with fast, reliable, nationwide coverage. Make the switch today. No, tell him you hate it. Tomorrow on E.T., Jamie Lee Curtis, Kevin Hart, and the cast of Borderlands, epic E.T. prank. Welcome to the party, Danny yep. Direct. He has been inducted <laughs> yes, now. Yeah. We leave you now with Tim Allen's TV return. Good night, everybody. We are so excited for shifting gears, having you back on our screen. ABC said if, if you come up. Happening now. A broken underground pipe sends water rushing out into the streets while leaving homes and businesses nearby high and dry. I'll tell you what the San Antonio water system says caused this problem. It's a situation Border Patrol sees often, a migrant in need of medical help. Coming up, we'll show you the process that Border Patrol takes to make sure that they get it. Getting a little hazy out there. We'll take a look at the latest plume of African dust, along with how long it's going to last, and an update on the tropics in just a bit. News at 5 starts right now. At first at 5, we have learned the name of the man accused of shooting at San Antonio police officers this past weekend. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying him as 25-year-old Jorge Chacon Gutierrez. The shooting happened Sunday at the Icon Apartments on Patricia Drive. That's on the city's north side. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says three officers responding to a domestic violence call at that complex when Chacon Gutierrez fired a rifle. The chief says the officers fired back and killed him. One of the officers was hit multiple times and needed surgery. She's been identified as Officer Viviana Rodriguez and remains in the hospital this evening. The other two officers who responded to that call with her have also been identified. Officers Victoria Camacho and Miguel Cardoza. They've been placed on administrative leave, which is department protocol. Now to a broken pipeline that has had water flowing in all the wrong places today. Yeah, take a look at this behind us here. It blew out a sidewalk. It sent water gushing onto a busy street. And as Katrina Weber shows us, it also caused a bit of a drought inside some nearby businesses. It was all hands on deck and all feet in the water as crews with the San Antonio water system scrambled to repair a broken pipe. Saw says nature did a number on the underground line along Southeast Military near South Presa, causing it to break in the dry shifting ground after eight this morning. When I came out, I, I saw that uh, there was a lot of a big old flood over there. Eddie Perez noticed the mess right away from his apartment complex across the street. The pressure from the pipe also sent pieces of the sidewalk flying. San Antonio police shut down the street near the crumbled concrete to keep traffic at a distance. From all the way down there to here and waiting there in no man's land. Unfortunately, that included the VIA bus that Lenise Harris was counting on. This is just something that happened, but next time at least they could have better communication. She spent nearly half an hour walking back to the nearest bus stop. You got to plant shoes on. Oh, yes, yes, and it's got a breeze out here. She took it all in stride while others were left with a bit of the struggle. The pipe problems had a ripple effect on this entire strip mall. Some of the businesses had to shut down due to having no water, while others never even got a chance to open up. It was just the pressure, but it didn't go off. Yeah, so it was just like trickling out. Yeah, so yeah. Back at his apartment, Eddie Perez was grateful for only minor water problems, given the size of the trouble just a few feet away. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It is a long and dangerous journey. A number of migrants crossing into the U.S. do not survive. Since last October, the Border Patrol's Del Rio sector says 121 people have died. Today, they invited Daniela Ibarra out to Carrizo Springs to see how they're trying to save lives. This brush is thick and hard to walk through, but every year, thousands of migrants make the journey crossing land like this to get into the U.S. But with the elements, some of them need help from Border Patrol agents. They're running his uh, arterial pressure to see if he has a good pulse. It's an intense sight, but one Border Patrol agents see too often. 
This medical rescue is part of a demonstration by Border Patrol. It's meant to show how dangerous the journey here to the U.S. can be. In this case, Border Patrol agents were able to get this migrant medical help. This would be a prelude to a death if he wasn't found. So this happens pretty often and our teams uh, do find people often and help them. Border Patrol says they have several paramedics and EMTs to help respond to situations like this. Coming up at 6, the toll these rescues take on agents. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. And just last month, Daniela sat down with the Border Patrol's Del Rio Sector Chief, Robert Danley, for a one-on-one -on -one sit-down conversation about the border and gives a broader perspective of what he and his agents handle every day. You can watch the full interview by scanning the QR code on your screen right now. A man serving a 99-year prison sentence for allegedly beating his son is getting a retrial in that case. An appeals court overturned a lower court's decision and granted an appeal for Terrence Harper. Back in 2019, Harper was arrested and charged with injury to a child accused of beating his four-month-old son. In 2022, a jury found him guilty. Harper's attorneys tell us they felt there were several errors made during that case, but the most significant during the trial the court and the state didn't allow a defense expert to testify via Zoom. It's not just about Zoom versus in-person testimony. It was about Mr. Harper's constitutional right to present a defense. And so we're very excited that the Court of Appeals agreed with us on that. Now, the state can still appeal that decision, but it's unclear whether they will do so. Harper's retrial could possibly happen later on this fall. Now, he's also facing a separate charge, capital murder of a child under 10 for the death of an infant who was in his care in 2012. That case was opened after Harper's son was injured in 2019. Let's check out traffic on this Tuesday, and we're going to take you to 1604 East at Nacogdoches Road. You can see it is very busy. As a matter of fact, the westbound lanes of North Loop 1604 at Nacogdoches just opened about 30 minutes ago. Construction, but that's not what slowed things down out here. They were closed for the better part of the day after an 18 wheeler hit a wall and leaked hydraulic fluid this morning. One person taken to the hospital expected to be OK, but you can see things are moving along very slowly out there as we speak. A lot of AC going in those cars <laughs> as well, and that humidity is thick, Adam. It is. It's very thick, but that's what you'd expect this time of year. I mean, it is late July, almost early August here in South Central Texas, and it's back to more normal conditions. But take a look at our high temperature today. Actually, a little below average again. So far, the high 94. Of course, I say so far because between now and 6 o'clock, we can sometimes warm up a little bit, but the average is 97 in that record. 105 back in 2017. Last few summers, we were very familiar with triple digits. Today, Del Rio, that's it. Warren's backyard at 100. 93 shirts in Frank's backyard. Uh, in shirts in Jim's backyard, 94. 93 in Seguin. You get the idea. It's a fairly typical 90s out there right now, falling into the 80s. Unfortunately, not a cloud to really make any rain for now, but we do have a little glimmer of hope for showers. We'll get into that along with the hazy dust in the sky. That forecast in just a bit. All right, thank you, Adam. Coming up tonight on the night beat, KSAT investigates a new accusation against a Leon Valley elected official. A woman stepping forward saying she was sexually assaulted by Benny Martinez. The alleged incident happened last year in a church. Eva Cervantes says she was a church volunteer where Martinez was also a member. At the time, she took her complaint to the church. Then months later, she also filed a police report. Cervantes said she had no idea there was a former complaint against Martinez until she saw the story on KSAT. KSAT investigates this allegation, and you can watch the full story tonight at 10 on the Night Beat. Members of the FBI and the Secret Service testified before Senate Judiciary and Homeland Security Committees today about the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. The acting Secret Service Director Ronald Rowe acknowledged there were major failures and promised immediate changes. At times he got heated while recounting the events of that day. I could not and I will not and I cannot understand why there was not better coverage or at least somebody looking at that roof line when that's where they were posted. Now, Roe was second in command before former Secret Service Director Head Kim Cheadle stepped down. He acknowledged the shooting likely could have been prevented. 
Rowe also testified that agents from Trump's detail had no knowledge that the suspect had a gun prior to the shots being fired. Rowe also showed photos that he said highlight that if local police sniper teams were positioned where he says they were told to position, they should have been able to see the shooter on the roof with the gun. Members of the local sniper team told ABC News they were texting about the suspect acting suspicious more than an hour before the shooting, but that information did not go over a radio, according to Roe. We were in Austin yesterday where he laid out his plans. President Joe Biden calling for seismic changes to the U.S. Supreme Court. A long shot move that makes him the first sitting president in generations to back those kinds of changes. CNN correspondent Julia Benbrook shares a reaction to his proposals and the impact those proposals could have during this election year. President Joe Biden is calling for major Supreme Court reforms, one of his first big moves since dropping out of the presidential race. I have great respect for our institutions and the separation of powers laid out in our Constitution. But what's happening now is not consistent with that doctrine of separation of powers. He's pushing for a constitutional amendment, stripping the president of immunity for crimes committed while in office, 18-year term limits for Supreme Court justices, and a binding code of conduct for the high court. The proposals, which stand little chance of going anywhere with a divided Congress, received swift criticism from Republicans on Capitol Hill. House Speaker Mike Johnson calling them dead on arrival. How are you going to get this going? The proposed changes designed to excite the Democrats' progressive base come as polling indicates support for the court is hovering near historic lows, with the majority of Americans saying they disapprove of the job the court is doing. Former President Donald Trump is calling this move a, quote, typical Biden con. On the campaign trail, Democrats frequently point to the decisions made by the Supreme Court's conservative majority, solidified by Trump, to underscore what they see as the high stakes of the 2024 election. Vice President Kamala Harris endorsed the proposed changes in a statement released by her campaign, saying that they would restore confidence in the court and strengthen our democracy. Reporting at the White House, I'm Julia Benbrook. Cowboys training camp continues today. The boys in full pads. Larry Ramirez will have a live report for us from Oxnard, California. Coming up. But before that, a scam warning regarding travel loyalty points. Hackers have managed to steal points and either use them or sell them online. Why those points have become easy targets and how much it could actually cost you. When we Another plume of Saharan dust is expected to move into Texas this week. So here are some interesting facts you may not know about the dust. Every year, about 180 million tons of dust moves across the Atlantic Ocean. That is enough to fill 4.5 million 18-wheelers full of dust. The dust is often rich in nutrients like iron and phosphorus. As it settles over oceans, it fertilizes things like algae and plankton, and also, as it settles over land, it provides vital nutrients to areas like the Amazon rainforest. It can also be a hurricane killer. Hurricanes need moisture-rich air from the surface to the top of the atmosphere. And the air that carries the Saharan dust is usually very dry, which in turn prevents hurricanes from developing or suppresses them and keeps them from strengthening. As for us in Texas, if the dust plume is dense enough, it can cause some minor allergy issues. But really the biggest thing that folks notice is haze on the horizon. And even at sunrises and sunsets, it can make them more beautiful with a nice orangey hue. As a lot of people head out for summer vacations, there's a new warning about hackers hitting those hard-earned travel loyalty points. Loyalty accounts can be an easy target for hackers with personal information they've accessed through data leaks. The way the hackers are getting into these accounts is pretty straightforward. With a simple name and a password, you're typically gaining access to these sites. And the payoff for scammers can be high. It used to be you had to fly to get the points, and those points were super duper valuable. But now with these credit card and other loyalty program extensions, 
What we're seeing is points values go up. Once the hackers have your points, experts say they're selling them online. When I went in to book, I realized that 165,000 points have been stolen from my account about three months earlier. Someone had hacked into my account and had spent almost all my miles on luxury car rentals from, from a few different airports. I was extremely angry. I had been saving these points for over 10 years. Oh my gosh, over 10 wow. years. So, okay, let's talk about how valuable those points are. The woman you heard from there who had 165,000 points stolen said that equaled more than $1,500. Yeah, another example why it's important to continue to change your password on a regular basis. And I don't know about you or you, but I'm going to check my I know, points that's exactly as soon as I thinking. get home and change some passwords and, and all that stuff. All Adam. the passwords, it's a lot to keep up with. Yeah, it is. You got to do it. I have an app that in and of itself keeps track of passwords. Yes. But then I wonder how secure is my password right. app? Right, what if your password oh, app gets hacked? Let's not talk about it. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the weather. Let's get right into it. And we will talk about that dust a little bit. I want to start with our headlines because you did see that hazy sky. Heat mid to upper 90s the rest of this week and into next week. It's back to normal for this time of year. Back to what we would typically expect opposed to all the rain in the 80s that we had of days past. Rain. A, oh gosh, this is embarrassing. A small chank, chank <laughs> by Sunday. We'll forgive Kids, you. Check your homework, okay, before going on air. Well, you check it twice. Check it twice. Yeah, yeah. The dog yeah. ate it today, I guess. Small chance by Sunday. We still don't have autocorrect in these systems. Isn't that amazing? This day and age. Dust, noticeable for a few days, I think, all the way through Thursday. So here's a look at that dust. And it's a pretty noticeable plume here, this dark brown color. That's the thicker plume of dust. And last week we were talking about it. It was way out over the Atlantic. Now it's here, and I even noticed it today, taking one of the flyover ramps on the interchanges. I couldn't see downtown like I normally can. I always have those little landmarks to look at that uh, help me gauge the haze outside, and it's definitely there. I think it's going to be even a little bit thicker tomorrow. Thursday, it's still going to be around, and then we get a break. You see how the sky kind of clears out, gets rid of the haze. We get a gap in the haze for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I mean, a little bit of haze in the sky Saturday, Sunday, but I don't think it's going to be like what we've had. Okay, rain chances. I boosted Sunday a little bit to 30%, so nothing significant, but 30% chance on Sunday because I see a little opening in our upper level weather pattern with enough instability and moisture to maybe kickstart some isolated or widely separated showers. Here's the upper level heat high, the big blue H as we like to call it, the dry high. It's basically right overhead. It's the primary driving force of our weather pattern right now, but it is gonna push off to the north by this upcoming weekend over the western U.S. And what that does with the clockwise flow around it, it gives us this northerly steering flow aloft and opens the door for some energy in the atmosphere to move in. Right now it's blocking all the energy out, but the door is going to be open and I think we will have little bits of energy by Sunday and into Monday to potentially kickstart a few showers. And you look at the overall rainfall potential, uh, for us south central Texas, not a whole lot compared to the rest of the nation. Quick look at the tropics. Still this really wimpy wave out here, just a cluster of weak thunderstorms that's closer to South America, just off the South American coast. That's headed toward the east coast of the U.S., the Bahamas and whatnot. And over the next basically five to seven days, it's got a 40 to 60% chance of developing into our next tropical cyclone or tropical depression even. And if that develops into anything, it looks like as of now, it would keep its moisture far to the east of us. For now, we have the hazy sunshine. So that's the headline tomorrow, more haze. 78 in the morning, 89 at noon, 97 the high temperature, southeasterly wind at 10 to 20. So a noticeable wind, just like what we've been having. And it's that humid wind off the Gulf of Mexico, of course. A little bit warmer closer to the Rio Grande tomorrow. 103 in Del Rio, Eagle Pass up to 102, along with Carrizo Springs at 103. And you look ahead, we do have a little glimmer of hope. That's what we're looking at by Sunday and Monday, 30% chance of some of those showers and thunderstorms. But I know that's nothing like what we had before, you know, last week and even over the weekend, but it's something to yeah. break the monotony of our typical summertime pattern. Yeah. Sure. Hazy days. That basically says it all yep. right there. Hazy dog days of summer.
All right. Thank you, Adam. Yep. All right. Let's go out to California right now. Larry Ramirez standing by. And Larry, the Cowboys actually getting a player back today. Yeah, so cornerback Trayvon Diggs, he is off the physically unable to perform less. And he was asked if he wanted to talk to the media, and he did this, just shook his head no. But you know what, we're going to talk about him nonetheless. So what's the plan to get Diggs back into the mix? And Jake Ferguson, the Cowboys star tied in, wants to make another big jump this season coming up. The NFL said that coaches have to do in-game interviews this year. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, excited. Real excited about it. <laughs> Fire it up, man. Can't, can't, chain, chain me down. Yeah. Mike McCarthy can't wait for in-game interviews this season as we go camping with KSAT. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome live to Oxnard, California, as we continue to cover Dallas Cowboys training camp. So today was day five for the Cowboys on the field, but it was their first day in pads since reporting to camp one week ago. Now, after getting the day off yesterday, the boys went back to work this morning in pads. The intensity ramped up, of course, as it always does when the hitting begins. Before practice started, we found out that cornerback Trayvon Diggs was removed from the physically unable to perform list. He did not participate in team drills yet. Instead, he worked out with director of rehab Britt Brown. During his daily press, our head coach Mike McCarthy was asked about the plan to get Diggs back in the mix. Smartly, uh, you know, the biggest thing is to get him, you know, stay on his uh, rehab program with Britt, but to, to get him into the, the jog throughs and in the, in the teaching drills is the first step. And then, you know, we'll see how we progress into the uh, individual. Yeah, you need to play it safe with number seven, that's for sure. So yesterday we talked about tight end Jake Ferguson, who's coming off a Pro Bowl campaign, and he wants another. So coming into his third season, he's established himself as the Cowboys' number one tight end and as one of the better tight ends in the NFL. During his rookie season, he had 19 catches for 174 yards and two touchdowns. Then last season, he made a big jump with 71 receptions for 761 yards and five TD receptions. Jake expects big things again this season, and he wants to hit another new level. I think I got to make that same jump, if not more. Um, you know, we talk about being a leader, but also at the same time, you got to still do your part. And I think one of my big focuses this offseason was, you know, just being consistent in everything I'm doing. If it touches my hands, I got to make a play. You know, if the ball's coming to me or, you know, if I'm blocking, I got to make that block. I can't, you know, take plays off or I can't, oh, hey, I missed my technique on that. It's got to be clean throughout the whole game. I would say Jake is, you know, it would be a poster child. I mean, you'd like to see all, all the guys make that jump. I really love the path that he's been on since he's arrived here from Wisconsin. And coming up at 6, we're going to talk more about Diggs, who's off the pup list. And we're also going to hear from offensive lineman Tyler Smith, who just absolutely loved putting pads back on today and crashing into people. That's it from Oxnard. Back to you in San Antonio. Of course, he's a football player, a lineman. He should like that. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back.